Okay, so let's start. So in order to not disadvantage you uh, as compared to regular students, uh, I decided I'll give you a separate midterm for the extended part on Tuesday so that you have full time for solving the regular part problems. Otherwise, you would have two hours for uh, more problems than three one to one. Um, so um, what are you going to have on the exam? There will be two problems uh, that are just basic probability. So it will be wrapped as algorithms, but it will be really just uh, uh, basic probability questions. And uh, you should know, for example, uh, basic properties of quick sort and uh, uh, the fact that uh, runs in time, expected time, n log n, and similar stuff. So, <coughs> and uh, so there will be nothing terribly advanced uh, on the exam. So we'll just review basic probability, and you will be just fine. Okay, and of course the exam will be just here during the regular lecture. Okay, so what is, how do we implement lists? What are the two main implementations? Exactly, so it's either array or Link lists. Now, what is the fast? Uh, perf uh, what operations are done in a fast way uh, in an array as opposed to link list? Exactly. So, uh, in an array, you can directly access the it element, right? But what is hard? to insert or delete, right? Because you have to shuffle the other elements around. And linked list is exactly the opposite, right? Searching for the ith element is hard because you have to start from the beginning and follow the links. But inserting and deleting is a constant time. You just um, reshuffle the pointers, right? Well, wouldn't it be really nice to have a data structure that uh, <coughs> has the <coughs> both operations fast, right? So, um, so the let's try to fix the linked list. For example, if you want to keep a sorted array uh, in a linked list, then you would have the beginning of the linked list and then, Jesus Christ, what is the trick? Let me try to, ah, I think, or maybe it's too loud, let me see. Okay, let's give it a try. Say doubly linked list. Say you want to store a sorted list right? So what is the problem here? The problem here is that searching is really slow. So what is the deal here? Let me see. Uh, 
Okay. So the idea would be now, how about if we be clever and introduce shortcuts, right? So instead of having a structure that looks like this, we might have a structure that has several pointers, right? So you would go every other or maybe even more layers. You would go every fourth, right? So if you are looking for a, if you want to do binary search, you go to a very high level and you look, if you overshot it, if it's, uh, uh, too, this number is too big, you go one level down. You see, if you didn't overshoot it, yet, then you go down and you find your element here. So what do you think? What's the problem with this? Uh, Structure. Sorry? Well, it's not that big deal, right? It's you simply make the links every other, then every fourth, and so forth. Yeah. Insertion, deletion. Yeah. Exactly. Wow. Insertion and deletion is nightmare. Even if you mm, uh, did this kind of neat structure, after a few deletions and Inser insertions, it's going to be a total mess, right? By the way, what does this uh, structure resemble you in physical life? Uh, what is this idea? You, where is this idea used? Uh, railways. railways or elevators, right? In tall buildings, you have elevators that go every fifth floor, every tenth floor, uh, and so forth, right? Uh, so. Um, the problem is here, insertion and deletion. And this is, of course, what makes binary search trees so complicated because whenever you do addition or deletion, you have to rebalance the tree, right? Well, here, you want the structure itself to balance itself. Huh? How do we do that huh? without any kind of serious bookkeeping, what do you think? What do we rely on to balance the, so that the structure balances itself? Randomize it. You uh, randomize it. So when you have to insert a new element, you find where it belongs, right? And then you toss a coin, right? And you count how many times you got um, tail, for example, and this you construct uh, links on these. Uh, if you get uh, five tails, then you would construct uh, uh, links on the first five levels. Uh, by the way, how uh, deep, if in this perfect kind of structure, if you wanted to just, um, if you wanted to make it static, what's the height of the system if, uh, of the structure if you have altogether uh, n many elements? Log n, exactly. Now, uh, in fact, this structure was introduced relatively recently in 1989. For me, it was yesterday, but I'm sure you will disagree that this was recent, right? Um, and uh, it's a randomized data structure with the benefits of balanced trees, uh, such as AVL or red-black trees, which are pain to code, uh, but uh, this randomized structure has exactly the same expected time bounds, but not only that the expected time, or, um, 
expected time is low, but probability that it will get much worse uh, is very low, as you will see. It decreases very, very rapidly. Uh, so in O of 1 time, in constant time, you can find mean, max, successor of an element, and predecessor of an element. And you can even enhance it so that you can do in log n time uh, order statistics, right? So that you can tell what's the kth element. We will see this later. So they are much easier. So the structure is much easier to code. Uh, it tends to be a lot faster and it uses less space than balanced trees. So in fact, in many industrial uh, applications, skip lists completely eliminated binary search trees and uh, you use nowadays binary search trees only if you absolutely need the worst case performance guarantee to be logarithmic. But there are very few applications where uh, this is uh, a reasonable condition. So the idea is uh, uh, that you construct links on levels, but you do it. And how do you search if you have uh, links on several levels? So this is a sort, you know, you keep a sorted uh, list uh, there. You simply uh, try, you go with the fastest, the most parse uh, links, and you see 35 is overshot for looking for 24. You go one element down, one layer, one level down. Then you see here, you get uh, 21, if you followed uh, the link on the same level, you would again hit 35. So you stay on 21 and go one level down. And then you descend one level down and you find your number. So the <coughs> it's clear why it's efficient, but let's see how to make it. So... Um, Uh, the, uh, so, 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 uh, as I said, uh, when you insert, you, uh, you simply count, uh, you simply toss a coin k times, see how many, I mean, you toss a coin until you get uh, uh, a head and count the number of tails. And then as many tails you get, these will be the le levels that you will feel if you got, uh, um, say, two heads, then you will fill the levels from zero uh, to two, right? So when you delete, deletion is also extremely simple. All what you have to do is fix the pointers, but that's done exactly the same way as you do it with the regular linked lists. Okay, so um, let's now see. Um, uh, how fast we can search for an element. So when I toss a coin, what's the probability that I will um, produce uh, um, say I many or I plus one? Hmm, gee, so here it's uh, uh, maybe a little bit of mismatch because I start counting from zero. So this might be slightly inaccurate, but it doesn't make a big difference. So <coughs> uh, if you get i minus one uh, tails, you will then, and then you get uh, one head, probability for this event is one half to i, right, to the power i. Because head and tail are one half, so you have to get uh, tail, 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 i minus one times, and then a head. Probability for this is exactly one over two to the i. Uh, so with this probability, you will have links uh, <coughs> on uh, levels uh, between zero and uh, i minus one should be here. Okay, so if you have, if probability, if you have a bunch of elements, 
and you choose them at random with probability p. So for each element, there is probability to pick it is p, probability not to pick it is 1 minus p. So you go through the list of your elements. For each of them, you pick it with probability p. What is the expected number of elements that you will pick if you do it for n elements in total? Exactly, n times uh, the pr probability of uh, each element to be pick, picked, so it will be n divided by 2. two. So the number, so the expected number of elements uh, on each, on a, a particular level, on level, um, this should be, yeah, on level, I guess I minus 1 should be here. Then I have to, uh, because I forgot that I'm counting from 0. That's OK. So this is n divided by 2 to the n elements. So the num expected number of, layer of elements per each layer uh, keeps halving, right? So you can then, without much mathematics, uh, um, you can easily count uh, uh, what is the expected number of links uh, per element, right? So this is the sum for uh, when a go, uh, i goes from 0 to infinity of uh, this is the number of links, i plus 1, and this is uh, the probability, right, uh, to have this many links. And lo and behold, that's precisely the triangular sum that we had before that sums up to two. So the expected number of links uh, per element uh, is only two. So most of the, on average, so to speak, you will have links on the first two, uh, first two levels. Uh, and that's understandable because probability to have higher and higher uh, uh, links on higher and higher levels decreases by a factor of two. OK, so let's denote uh, by this uh, sharp i the number of elements on level i. So now we use the same trick that we, we used before <coughs> the all-important Markov inequality. Uh, what is then the probability that you will have at least one element on the i-th level? Well, probability that your random variable will the number of elements on the i-th level is bigger than 1, is smaller than the expected value <coughs> of your variable divided by this bound, right? So in general, this is bigger than t. A probability of that this is bigger than t is smaller than the expected value divided by t. So when t is equal to 1, you get just the expected number. And the expected number we know it's n over uh, the n divided by 2 to the i. So what's the probability to have an element on level i equals 2 log n? Well, n divided by 2 to the power 2 log n, right, is equal to 2 to the log n and then squared. 2 to the log n is just n, so you get n squared. n divided by n squared is 1 over n. So probability that you will have two, twice the log n uh, levels is 1 over n. What's the probability to have uh, elements on k times log n? <coughs> well, by the same calculation here, you get 2 to the k times log n. And lo and behold, this becomes 1 over n to the k minus 1. So for example, probability that you will have uh, uh, element on the height 10 times log n will be only 1 over n to the power 9. And if n is, uh, you know, any, you know, significant number, right, of the number of elements you store, uh, if n is, for example, uh, 10, then you get that uh, uh, pr probability to have, uh, um, uh, that you have, uh, um, elements of say on say uh, a tenth 
10 log n, right, level is uh, uh, only uh, 1 over um, n to the power 9, which is extremely small. Okay, so of course, probability to have exactly that many non-empty levels is then smaller than that because it's equal probability to have an element on that level times probability to have nothing above. But that probability is always smaller than 1. So probability that you have exactly k log n many levels is smaller than 1 over n to the k minus 1. So let's now compute what's the expected value of k that, uh, so that the number of levels is smaller than k times log n. Well, that's very easy, right, uh, to have uh, a k, uh, bound k with, with pro it probability we saw is n to the k minus 1. And if you sum up this sum, you get that this is, uh, it's again the triangular sum, right, with, uh, uh, it's a geometric progression with uh, 1 over uh, um, uh, 1 over n, the q factor, right? So this is n divided by n minus 1 squared. So if n is any number reasonably large, this is almost slightly, slightly, slightly smaller, than, uh, sorry, larger than 1, but uh, very close to 1. So the, so the expected number of levels is barely larger than log n, right? It's maybe log n, 1.1 log n. Uh, so in all likelihood, the, your skip list built by this randomized uh, procedure will be very shallow, will be exactly of depth uh, log n. So <coughs> let's now compute, uh, once you fix the level, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> let's compute how many elements that all have low, only links on the lower levels you might have between uh, two elements uh, on the, uh, which is, uh, that are on level i plus one, right? So, Again, the expected number of elements in between, you see, if you have for each element in between, you have one half probability that it also have, that this element also has a link above, right? Because each time you toss a coin and probability to have one more level is just another flip of the coin. So it's uh, uh, one half uh, and then for next element, probability is also one half. To have two, probability for first is one half, for the second one half. To have both is one half squared, and so forth. So you have no elements in between with probability one half, because you immediately got um, ahead. One element with probability one half squared, two elements with probability uh, two cubed, 1 over 2 cube and so forth, and this sums up precisely to 1. So this means that on average between two elements with the links up to level i, there will be only one element in between on average. So what is the consequence of this? So as a consequence, so the number of levels expected number is only slightly more than log n, say 1.1 times log n. So it's low multiple of log n. And between, <coughs> uh, between any two elements uh, of certain height, right, uh, the, the expected number of elements in between is just one. So when you search, you can go a log n many, ti uh, many times down, and across while you are searching on average, you also go, uh, well, uh, two, at most two, one in between, 
right? And then the next element with the same level. So you have to look up on average only two elements. So log n this way, and for each layer at most two, on average two uh, horizontally, so altogether the number of elements that you have to inspect is just approximately log n, right? So it is um, extremely, the uh, search is extremely fast. Okay, let's now see what is the space taken by the structure, right? So for every element with links on levels from zero to i, we have to store two times i plus one many pointers, right? One forward, one backwards. <coughs> and this is, uh, if it's from zero to i, so that's i plus one many pointers. So uh, the expected number of elements with highest link on level i, as we saw, is n divided by two to the i plus one. So the total expected space for all pointers is number of pointers for the, for the elements with levels up to i times n divided by uh, n divided by 2 to the i. And lo and behold, that's again our triangular uh, sum. And this, uh, this adds up to 2. So altogether, this is O of 4n. So it's actually O of n with very small uh, constant. So you can see that um, <coughs> you can see that the space is very small. It's linear in n. It's extremely simple to maintain it. You just use random number generator to simulate uh, coin tosses, right? And uh, um, you then do exactly what you do with linked lists, namely uh, make the pointers. So it's extremely easy to build and to maintain. And uh, as I mentioned, uh, the skip lists have almost uh, displaced uh, binary search trees uh, in applications. And I would recommend that you actually, as an exercise, Try to code this uh, structure in whatever is your favorite language in C++ or in Python. Um, and test it how well it works and compare it with uh, uh, an implementation of binary search tree. Okay, so now we want to see how would you expand this structure so that you can actually search for the kth largest element still in uh, time n log n, right here. Uh, to find the kth largest element, uh, you would have to find the largest and then uh, backtrack. So it would be, uh, if, uh, it would be, say, if you are looking for the median, you would have to do um, n over 2 uh, times uh, 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 binary search, right? So how would you, how would you uh, enhance this structure so that looking for kth largest element is also in log n time? So what would you add to this picture so that you can easily find in a log n time the kth largest element? What do you have to add to this structure? How would you fix it? Guys, no talking. You don't have to be here. You distract everyone around you. Have an index, brilliant. What kind of index? Where? Do you know what index the point is pointing to before you traverse it? Before you traverse it? Well, traversal is just one step. But uh, what, uh, what is uh, 
So you are looking for the kth element, and you would know, you would want to know whether it makes sense before you traverse it. So how would you do that? How would you ensure that you can actually uh, decide whether you, would, you should traverse it or not, regardless? Hmm? Yeah, how many elements the plane requires? Exactly. So you will put for each pointer, you will uh, also record the number of elements on lower levels between these two elements, right? And so if you reach an element, if you're looking for the, um, say, uh, uh, Kate uh, element, you go first by the highest level link, and you would look up how many elements are between the end and that element. If it's uh, more elements than the, in the, than the order, statistics, order statistics that you are looking for, if there are, for example, 20 elements and you are looking for the 10th largest element, you descend, right? Uh, you know that there are 10 elements here, and on the one level uh, lower, uh, right, you can uh, subtract the number of elements from this element to the end and see um, whether you have to descend for one element, uh, uh, one layer down and so forth. So if you record also the number of elements, and of course when you insert or delete, it will be easy to change uh, how would you change the pointer if you, uh, the counter, if you remove this element, you will simply add the number of elements uh, recorded here to the number of elements recorded uh, here, and that will be the new number here after you delete. So it is really, um, in this way, order statistics is also uh, doable in uh, logarithmically many steps. Okay, so I'm kind of not feeling uh, very well, so, and this is enough for the day. So for the midterm, practice basic probability, and uh, do not worry too much. <laughs>